Hey everyone, so a bit of a bonus video with regards to my series on shop essentials under $10, $25, $50, $100, $250, and I'll link to the playlist above. But uh, I've noticed a few videos from other folks on YouTube talking about tools that they wish they didn't buy or ones that are unnecessary for new woodworkers. And so I wanted to do something similar. So I've got 10 items today that um, were either a complete waste of money were bought with the best of intentions but never actually used and uh, are just generally ones that, that um, I don't think you should be too worried about buying uh, if you're a beginning woodworker or even an established woodworker. So let's take a look at these. Not going to go into as much detail as in the other videos, but uh, yeah, hopefully this will save you some money. All right, so we're actually going to start with a bit of a, a twofer on this one. And uh, let's first of all open up this kit. And this was bought on Amazon on a whim when I was a little intimidated by my router. And I thought this when rotary tool set is going to remove my fear, allow me to do some engraving work, allow me to put some nice edges on things. And this little tool is not great. So it's, a, it's essentially a Dremel knockoff. Um, very low quality, very low quality accessory kit that comes with it uh, as well. And even the, the attachment for you to get a little more detail doesn't work well. It glitches out all the time. Um, really just not an impressive tool and also not what I needed. So it was both a poor decision to even buy a rotary tool, but then I bought a cheap rotary tool that really hasn't worked out well in the end. But to go alongside that, Oh, it's an awful case, too. To go along with that, I actually bought a Mastercraft, so Canadian Tire, Canadian uh, retailer. I bought this 500-piece accessory kit. And I can't remember how much I paid for this. It wasn't too much, maybe $30. But it comes with all these accessories and this horrible case. This is some of the cheapest plastic, cheap plastic hinges. It's got this top part that opens up with these um, parts that I've, I've never really used um the majority of them so just like cutting wheels and other stuff like that well cutting wheels are below little engraving tools that work very poorly like you can start to thread stuff um but where the 500 accessories comes in is these little buckets or little bins of discs and these are just awful things to open i'm not even gonna open it but they basically just have like 30 or 40 cutoff discs in them and that helps to add to the count of um the 500 piece accessory kit and all these little sanding little doodads doesn't even say what grit they are just very low quality like there's a chance in the future where i may use this for something but honestly it's right now it's or for the last five years it's been collecting dust in the basement so definitely avoid your money on a rotary tool as well as the accessory kit if you do need one look at some of the trim routers if you're just looking for something that can take quarter inch bits it might be much more powerful and a lot more flexible for what you need. Next up, uh, let's take a look at a couple. Again, this is kind of a two, twofer as well, um, but these really cheap plastic tools from General. Uh, so the first one, and I've kept this to show me how to use it and the actual use cases, uh, but it is the angleizer. And on the surface, I'm like, okay, like this could work really well. We have some funky angles in, in a bathroom downstairs, so I bought this to help manage that. There are so many other ways to do it in a much more practical way. Luckily, this wasn't a very expensive tool. The worst part, though, like the use case is reasonable. The worst part is the quality of this. Uh, it's so cheap. It's super cheap plastic. It's not overly accurate. Um, even like the little uh, connectors here are all very cheap plastic. They'll jump around and then you have to line them up. Not a great tool. Again, something that's literally just been collecting dust in a drawer. I may use it at some point for something, but they show using this outside with concrete stones and that sort of thing. This wouldn't hold up to that. So not very good. And same goes for this little general um, angle finder. And not only is it so much smaller than I expected, the quality of the plastic is equally bad to this, although it does have these little seemingly brass... Um, spots on them and it's almost impossible to actually read the degrees within like you'd probably be within a degree and a half by using this so really not great small it just horrible tools just like the, the quality is not great the price is fine and maybe i'll use them to, at some point but you definitely don't need these 
moving along and oh my gosh, I think I've seen this on a few other videos. And this is a Mastercraft version. These strap clamps, so these for putting together boxes. Um, I had wanted the Bessie one, but the price was too high. So I bought the Mastercraft one and when it was on sale again, a store brand for Canadian Tire. Um, few things that I despise about this. So first of all, it's just a mess. Like it's just, it's so hard to keep organized, even like when you try to use it. Um, the other piece is that it doesn't work that well. There's so many better alternatives and like the Collins clamp system. I have been looking at that. If I do get into more box making, the, the quality of the plastic is very poor again. And it's just a mess. Like I basically just store it like this. Uh, if I were to do this, I probably, I think, the Wood Whisperer recommended the MLCS version, which has a lot more features and is, doesn't get quite as untidy as this. But yeah, this strap clamp for boxes, just a horrible purchase that's just a constant mess and collecting dust. Next up, uh, we have this um, marking gauge. So this was just a cheapo on Amazon. Uh, a few things that I don't like about it. So I, I, I think I have highlighted in another video, the Veritas, like full solid stainless steel one that I have with discs, which I really like the discs. The discs are for me at least much better than these points. So these points are often used by a lot of very skilled woodworkers. Um, the wood's not that bad. The brass isn't that bad, but what I find is just like, it rocks a lot. It's very hard to lock in and you don't necessarily get 90 degrees on it. So again, just a cheap on Amazon that I really didn't need. Uh, well, I needed something at the time, but rather than buying kind of a, a lifetime tool or one of pretty good quality, I went super cheap and uh, used it a few times. And then again, it's been collecting dust. So I'll probably give this to another local woodworker just kind of as a bit of a here, get started, but uh, definitely buy better when, when you can. Next up we have and I'm going to put these all in a series, uh, cheap hand planes. And uh, again, the Wood Whisperer actually just did a recent video on how to take some of the Stanley planes and spruce them up. These are nowhere near the quality of the Stanley plane. So these are from Footprint. And I don't know much about Footprint uh, other than they make very inexpensive hand planes. Not sure if they're similar price point to, to Wood River. I think that they're even a bit cheaper than that. But I bought, I think I bought one of these used and I think another one new. Um, they, they just require so much attention out of the box. And for a new woodworker, you don't necessarily have the skill or the confidence to basically take a brand new hand plane and completely set all the components of it and get it tuned up to the point where it's even going to work reasonably well. So the block plane is bad. I'd say that this is probably the worst of all of them. Uh, very difficult to get precise. I have sharpened the blade a few times and I just can't get it to work properly. So again, it's something where it just collects dust rather than me using it because it's not very easy to use. Number four, I've never used. I think that this one, I, I don't think it was a gift, but I think I bought this one used very inexpensively. The number five jack plane, the only thing I've ever used that for was leveling this softwood construction lumber um, workbench. So they haven't seen much use primarily because they just don't work well. It takes too much effort to get them set up and refined and sharp. So they've been collecting dust. So I'd rather sell these and get um, as much as I'd love to have Veritas or Lee Nielsen, even just getting a Stanley, sell these, get get a Stanley number five uh, jack plane or just a block plane and, and you'll be all set. So don't waste your money on cheap um, hand planes, unless you're going to put the time and effort in to calibrate them. Now we move to uh, electric spray gun from Tac Life, which is kind of one of the, the more discounty type brands on Amazon. Uh, I was getting into finishing a few things, both with paint and with some other finishes, and you can see some of the white residue on here. This thing is awful. Um, doesn't work well. You have to thin the paint so, 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 so much to use it. It doesn't come out evenly. Uh, this was very inexpensive. Even like the, the quality of the plastic's not, not too bad, but it's just bad. And 
uh, HVLP is definitely on my list at some point. Finishing is one of those things that I don't like. I know an HVLP will help, but this as a cheap replacement, I think in general, if you're looking to buy a decent tool and then you go, instead of going to something that's good, but medium price, that's what I should have done. I went super cheap because I wanted something very expensive. So I went super cheap rather than going with something in the middle. So yeah, th this tack light thing, just a huge waste of money. Actually, probably the biggest waste of money out of everything I've shown so far. Now we'll move to, oh gosh, uh, this Craig Multimark. And I bought this just when I was getting a lot of my Craig uh, accessories and other jigs for cabinet making, which I like the majority of them. This thing is awful. The, the plastic's generally low quality. It's not, if I just loosen this a little bit, you'll see that this wiggles a ton. And then depending on where you lock it down, it's not going to be 90 degrees. Similarly, you have to take this brass knob off to then reposition it into some of their other weird spots. So this is meant to do, I guess, 45s. But again, it's not perfect. It, it wiggles a lot. So again, so it's dependent on how you lock this down. It's got this this little level just because it's not really needed. The only thing that I've used this for, and it was just when I needed, um, I, I had a few squares going, was basically just setting the depth for something. So basically you could, that's all I was using it for. So a huge waste of money on this little tool. And really that's the only use that, that I could find with it because it doesn't move. Um, otherwise you're off by a couple degrees every single time. So the Multimark, one of the, uh, out of all the great Craig tools that I've owned, this has been the, the most useless for me. Next up, uh, we have a moisture meter. Um, I don't necessarily regret buying it. It's just complicated to use. And this is again, one of those tools where listening to wood talk, watching the wood whisperer, watching Matt Cremona, I'm like, oh yeah, like I really want to get a moisture meter because I buy most of my lumber off secondhand um, websites. So like uh, Craigslist, Kijiji, Facebook Marketplace. So I wanted to get one of these to test them. It just doesn't work well. So rather than buying a good one from like Wagner or, or a brand like that, where you're maybe spending $100, $150 or more, you could spend five or 600 on them. I bought this on the Amazon, um, warehouse deals, I think for $30. I think it was normally $70 and it does not work well. It's not consistent. So like right now it's 25% humidity. I can come out in a few hours with no change to the outdoor humidity and it might read 30%. So it's, it's not great. Um, it's very complicated to use. You need to have the manual on you all the time just because there aren't many buttons. And it's not very natural to know what to do. So again, one of those times where rather than buying a reasonable quality tool i went cheap and uh definitely paid the price on it so moisture meter for me probably unnecessary in general um but a cheap one is uh potentially even worse huh this one's a, a bit of a shout out to john i think it's john over at uh lincoln street woodworks um handsaw and you can see the rust piled up here this basically been sitting on my lumber rack for years, I bought this uh, when I first started to get into woodworking because I wanted a quick way to break down lumber uh, if I had to put it in the, the Jeep at the time. Now we have a truck. Um, I tried resawing with this ridiculously once one time and horrible, horrible experience. So it cuts on the push stroke. So it's very much like that North American, that Scandinavian style saw, not for woodworking. This is for like working with raw lumber. Um, this is not a fine woodworking tool. I do have the Japanese saw that John highlighted in his video. So um, this has been collecting dust, but the Japanese pole saw has been getting a ton of use. And I featured that in one of my um, essentials videos. And finally, not necessarily a tool that's a waste of money, but a tool that I'm going to call a waste of money for the woodworker. So this does have some DIY value, and I've used it to cut some curves in some trim. Um, but a jigsaw really doesn't play a lot of, well, plays no role in my woodworking. So um, I, had an, I had a Bosch barrel grip 
one that was wired and i i like that for my diy stuff and i, I do like this dewalt it's it's good it's not cheap but it was it was definitely a side grade from my bosch one and nice to be cordless the only thing i use this for now is if i'm getting like a 16 foot piece of lumber and i just want to have this in the truck so i can just break it down a little bit um it's a fine jigsaw it's, it's a great brushless dewalt xr jigsaw but for woodworking it's just far too rough. You get so much chatter on your board. It's just not needed for woodworking. So save your money uh, and, and don't get a jigsaw. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave a comment below on some of the more useless tools that you've purchased uh, for your shop. And whether you agree or disagree with my thoughts, definitely hit that like button and subscribe if this is your first time on my channel. And thanks for watching and there'll be more videos coming soon. Thanks.